So now we've got Betty in the chair, and we've been talking to Henry, and we've got to through uh, to the point where uh, you and Henry were married in Peak Hill, and uh, what I'd just like to get you to put on tape, if you would, is the history of your family and how you ended up being in Peak Hill. I was born in Manildra on the 25th of November, 1924, to Walter and Irene Windred, uh, Barnes. Mum and I was Windred. Um, I'm the eldest of four. My brother, Brian, was born at uh, Cudell in 26, June 26. Jan was born at Yeovil on August 28, and my youngest brother was born at Bowden Gate. I can't remember, but he was nearly 10 years younger than me. And that was Bob? That was Bob, yeah. Um, I can just remember living at Yeovil. I started school at Bowden Gate. And I had a lovely teacher that was a Miss Olson, I've never met, forgotten her name. Uh, we moved to Peak Hill in March uh, 1936. Um, I finished, I went to second year in high school. The intermediate uh, at that stage didn't come in until the following year. So I left work and went, left school and went to work at 14. I worked um, odd jobs uh, until I was 16 and I went, started on the uh, Peak Hill at, as a telephonist in exchange or um, manual exchange. In the war years at 18, I went into the post office and worked, delivered mail and worked on the counter and, and sorted all the mail. Had to deliver any telegrams that come during the war, whether they were missing in action or killed or wounded or whatever. And at three days before I was 20, Henry and I married at Peak Hill. So, when did you actually meet Henry? Oh, <laughs> uh, only um, what we went out the first time together on the 26th of March, we were engaged on the 28th of July and we were married on the 25th of November, all in the one year. And what was the year? 44. 1944, so you didn't meet him until 1944? I, oh, no, I didn't, did I? No. And is there any truth in the story that you chased him around and caught him on the No, bike? he's telling lies. He's telling lies. He done all the chasing. Right. Because I was too shy to, <laughs> to, to chase. <laughs> okay, now we've, uh, when we were talking to Henry earlier, we, we talked about uh, you moving to Sydney and then coming back to Peak Hill and the early years with the children. Is there, is there anything that comes to mind that you'd like to uh, talk to us about in relation to the young family and being you know, newlyweds in the young family? Oh, <coughs> when we were first married, did he tell you about us going out to a farmhouse? Yes, he mentioned the different houses that you lived in. And when he had butter boxes to, to sit on. Uh, did you tell me that? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Um, and then from there, we went over to um, the forest and we lived in an old humpy. Did you? Did he tell you that? No. <laughs> um, and right, we were just talking about when you met Henry, and uh, we were moving on to early times, a uh, young married couple with children, and earlier on Henry was did a run through the children and who they married and 
Uh, I just thought we'd like to get you, Nan, if you would, to tell us about the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. Can I tell you that the trains going from um, uh, no, we had no electricity, no um, phone, 19 miles out, I was a town girl, never been out in the country. And Henry come home at night and I'd be sitting up crying. And he said, what's wrong with you now? And I said, I can hear every bird land on top of the roof. And he said, well, I won't eat you, will I? So and I sort of got a bit used to that while I was in, on a farm, a house, in a farmhouse. Then when we moved over to the um, forest, we had to clear the water to be able to wash with. And uh, we had quite a few arguments about water being bought, carted up from the dam, put in 44-gallon drums to be cleared. And Rex was born, oh, we didn't have a car then, no t still no telephone or electricity. And Henry used to double me on a two-wheeler bike, handlebars of a bike, to, over to his uncle's place, about five miles, I think. And we're going to town once every fortnight or three weeks. And the uh, man, the butcher used to send out um, meat on the mail run. Um, I, I couldn't drive. I learned to drive in a four wheel blitz wagon while we were there, but I didn't get my licence till I was 29 just before Anne was born. Uh, just after Anne was born. Um, and now, what do you want me to say about the uh, great grandchildren? Well, you Henry's might just talk children. about the grandchildren, starting at Rex's children. Yes, I thought that was one of the lovely things, of my, one of the best parts of my life, my grandchildren arriving. Um, Fiona was born just after I was 45, turned 45, and I thought that was lovely. And. Um, Stephen, Fiona's brother, Rex and Helen's children, was uh, I think about two and a half years younger than Fiona. Ted and Pam's children arrived then. Um, Marie, uh, in between Stephen and Ma um, and uh, Fiona and Mark and Stephen. Ma uh, of the same age, born in the one year. Then Kevin, uh, Linda, and I went down when she t to stay with um, them when she was first brought home from hospital, and um, it was lovely, and um, a lovely time. And then there was Aaron, and then the two girls after a bit of a break, and. Nice. Uh, two girls, it was Linda and Aaron, the two eldest, Nana Brake and, and Kate and Megan. And they've all been very loving, uh, caring children to me and to Pa. Anne. Uh, mm? no. Oh, Anne, yeah. yes, I forgot about Anne's. Um, Anne has two children, a girl and a boy, Jane and, and Andrew. Um, and then... Um, now you might start from the top again and go through their children. We've got Fiona. Didn't I say Fiona? No, I'm saying their children, Fiona's oh, children. Oh, Fiona has a, a, a boy, um, Bradley, and I, I think he's nine. And Jenna, seven, is Linda's daughter. Then I had a long break before any more great-grandchildren arrived, and I thought, oh, yeah. Then, uh, who's next? I think um, Mark's got two little boys, 19 months apart, and um, then nine. Uh, uh, Bailey was born uh, January uh, three years ago, and um, uh, Nash is just turned two. 
And Georgia was born on Henry's birthday on the 20th of February. Um, and she's three. That's Andrew's daughter. Uh, that is Andrew's daughter, yes. Um, and they're expecting another one January. Uh, uh, who do I? And then so, uh, Marie has a, a, um, as Ted's daughter, has a uh, little girl to just turn to and expects again in um, November. Sophie. Sophie. Uh, her, yes, the little Marie's daughter is Sophie. Um, Fiona. Fiona. Natasha. Oh, and I've forgotten Natasha. What am I going to do when there's two more arrived? <laughs> Natasha, Fiona has a daughter, uh, 16 months old. She was born the 16th of April last year. And, um, and that's Nasha. And um, there's two on the way? Two more on the way, yeah. You've already mentioned... Yeah, Marie that. has another one, I remember, and, and um, Andrew has uh, but his wife expects in January next year. I sometimes get to mind, or I did, when Jenna, before she went to school, she's going to school now, and I would say Jenna is the best child that I've ever had anything to do with. A bit like me. But, um, so that's, that's the, grand, the great grandchildren. And just to, to finish up, is there anything that you'd like to uh, uh, talk about, uh, advice? Uh, your life, regrets? Well, there's plenty of uh, For me, there's plenty of regrets. I wish I'm I... already sorry I said regrets. Let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> advice. I, I wish I didn't have quick, such a quick uh, temper and uh, I didn't um, blab blab as much as I do. I, I, I've never been one to um, uh, not say what I think, I suppose. <laughs> That's the biggest regret for me. But you must see life a lot different now at this end of almost 80 years. Yeah, yeah. Compared to being a young person, is there any advice that you'd like to give to any younger people uh, looking in at this? Oh, I suppose I could, but I, I think the main thing is to love everybody and to tell the truth. I would like to add uh, about the, uh, what with my mother and father, um, uh, their main transport was a horse and sulky, and then they and, uh, made a car. They seen the aeroplane and then the man on the moon. I've seen all of that, and then all the extra with the, the, the cars, the bitumen of the roads, um, big aeroplanes going all over the world, just like a daily exercise, and all the technology that um, computers and things that I don't understand. And I wonder what our children will see in the future.